Sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, no appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hid their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. What we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced by our, our offenses, crushed by our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death, and, there was count and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many, and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace and receive mercy to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Soon though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. May that word be upon our minds, upon our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus went out with the disciples across the Kindrun Valley to where there was a garden and to which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew of the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Who are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he had said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malachus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into your scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Ananias first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better for one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple fouled Jesus. Now the other guard, disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid 
who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there, keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I have said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way that you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Ananias sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled, so they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves, and judge him according to your law. Jesus answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone, in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium, and summoned Jesus, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, a He again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers woven a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man! 
When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from him above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's seat in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, carrying the cross himself. He went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on his rus, on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest, other Jews, said to Pilate, Do not write, the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece, from top down. So they said to one another, Let not tear it, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vestures they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple with whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it, it, put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, He handed over his spirit. Let us kneel. Kneel. 
Let us rise. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs may be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then the other who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust a lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that scripture passage might be fulfilled, not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took the body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighed about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in that place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there, because the Jewish preparation day for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. You may be seated. As we enter into this Good Friday service, it is good, it's good news, our salvation has come upon us and we once more remember, like yesterday, that biblical remembering who we are and what we're all about. And we might even look at this, these readings today and ask ourselves, whom do you and I stand with? Whom do you and I stand with? In our first reading from the book of Isaiah, we have, do we stand with the suffering servant? And that's what we hear in our first reading, as this narrator says, he stands with this suffering servant. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And then he goes, through, goes on to say, though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearer. He was silent and opened not his mouth. If he gives his life for an offering to sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life. So this narrator who narrates this fourth song of the suffering servant says that he stands with this individual. And this individual who we stand with, what is he standing with? He stands with humility. As we hear, it was for our infirmities that he bore our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for, the, for the, our sins. Upon him was chastisement that makes the whole. By his stripes we were healed. That's his humility of this suffering servant. He, done, he has done no wrong, but he is still suffering. For others. And then we see the glory that this narrator gives to us, this glory of this particular suffering servant. It says, Because of his afflictions, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his sufferings, may his servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. 
And so we see his glory coming from this suffering like the phoenix coming out of the ashes. It rises. And so this suffering servant is rising as well for many. Humbly he comes and glorifying we see through this reading. And the narrator stands with the suffering servant. Do we stand with the suffering servant? Do we stand with those who are suffering even now? Jesus in disguise. Maybe it's your wife, your husband, your kids, your neighbor. Uh, maybe that you're being called to be generous, you know, to the Salvation Army, to, to a food pantry, to St. Vincent's de Paul, to New Beginnings, or some other, you know, charitable organization, Red Cross, in your area. Do you stand with the suffering servants that are around you? To stand with them is to stand with Christ. In our second reading, we hear from the book of Hebrews. Do we stand with the great high priest? The great high priest. This great high priest that we hear that he has taken on our human nature. Our human nature. And he knows our sufferings. He knows what we go through on a daily basis. He knows our struggles, our anguish, our sorrow. For he is one like us. Again, celebrating that whole Christmas season. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The mystery of the incarnation of divinity and humanity coming together as one, as a whole. And that coming together as well, the bridegroom who comes for his bride, you and me, the bridegroom has come into this world to lay his life down for his bride, as every husband should be, as even Paul says in the book of Ephesians as well, of what is the husband called to do for the bride? To die for his bride, to wash her clean, to make her holy, Holy means being set apart, being set apart. And we have been set apart from the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And that's probably a struggle for a lot of us, that we struggle. The world is so, you know, tantalizing. Uh, all it glitters in gold. We're, we're attracted to that. You know, we, we want to be amused. Uh, we want to be entertained. You know, be my guest, be my guest, put my service to the test. And the world will graciously do that. You know, put a knack around our neck and feed us and give us what we think we want. But here we have a great high priest who knows what we need, what we need. And so we find ourselves, you know, as he offers him, uh, himself, Jesus, as a sacrifice, an oblation to remove sin and to destroy death once and for all, that we might have life and have it to the fullest. As John 10, verse 10 says, why Jesus came in the world, that we might have life. You and I might have that life. And then finally, we come to John's gospel. Do we stand with the triumphant king? Do we stand with the king of kings and the Lord of lords? Do we stand with Jesus? Or do we stand with the world? That's what's being contrasted here in the very beginning of the scriptures um, of John's gospel. As we have Judas, who is bringing a band of guards and the high priests um, and various people who are coming. Uh, the Pharisees and soldiers, they're all being led by Judas. And it says, Judas' betrayer was also with them. Who was he with? them. Who is them? The world. The world. That's the them. And we hear twice they ask Jesus um, of who he is. Uh, they ask them, uh, G they want to know Jesus of Nazareth. And he said to them, I am. That's the first time. And then again, they ask that same question. Um, they want Jesus of Nazareth. And he says for a second time, I have told you, I am. Let's juxtapose that now to Peter. And we now have Peter who is next to a charcoal fire. And we have twice being asked of him, you are not one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. And a second time, same question. You are not one of the disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. 
Well, Jesus gave two testimonies of who he is, his identity, I am. We have twice Peter giving his lack of identity as a disciple of Jesus Christ. I am not. I am not. Who does Jesus, who does Peter stand with? Well, he stands right next to Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, who stands with the world. And so Peter finds himself standing with the world. How about you and I? Who are we standing with? Are we standing with the suffering servant? Are we standing with the great high priest? Are we standing with the trumpeting king of kings and lord of lords? Or are we standing with the world? Are we standing with Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him? Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. We hear from one of the individuals that was crucified with Jesus. Remember me. Even, and he stood with Jesus on that cross next to him. And Jesus told that man, this very day, you will be with me in paradise. You will stand with me next to the Father. God bless you all. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the whole Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church, to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on your, our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray also for our Bishop Stephen, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed. Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide their ears of their inmost hearts and may unlock the gates of his mercy that having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, 
they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever-living God, who made your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and to keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever-living God, who gathered what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bonds of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promise on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we ourselves be constant in mutual love and strive to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart, 
and the rights of peoples look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and ever living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you that all may rejoice because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for a swift end to the coronavirus and pandemic that afflicts our world, that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health, and healing, look with compassion on our world, brought low by disease. Protect us in the midst of the grave challenges that assail us, and in your fatherly providence, grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those working in eradicate this scourge through Christ our Lord. I 
At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the the power, and and the the glory glory are yours, now now and forever. Let us pray. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increased, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.